Okay, so <clears throat> um, it's 11.30. And if you haven't enjoyed what we've done here, you can call the National <laughs> Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255, available 24 hours every day. I'm leaving that in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's 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 I, I think we're going to need that every show for the next 4 years. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, I will record it. I I may just take that little sample. Boom. <laughs> it's right in <laughs> every time. Try to go through all the cool stuff or Man, we get it's it's such a big it's a great big universe and we're all really puny. Do you want to hit just go um, back to the thing we did last time and hit just the fix? We could do just the picks. Um, At some point, we're going to have to start doing the entire show. You know that, right? I, I mean, know. Will we, will we save the other stuff for next time? We'll try. It took th- it stuff. took three weeks to go through. the The problem is that you know, with the political season being what it is, it's taking up the entire news cycle, and everything else is being pushed to the back burner because yeah. there's just so many hours in the day. And if you want to, if you need to go through. And actually do what we say we're going to do, which is dismantle the current events, then it takes time to do that. And that's why the show is long. So for those of you that are still watching, I know there's somebody out there. Oh, there's four viewers out on Facebook. Facebook has four viewers. Four? That's almost five. That's almost five. But there's two more out on Twitch. So we actually have six people watching. We have six people watching us live right now. Cool. That's more than five. That is uh. that is more than five. <laughs> Not even one hand. I have to go on to a whole other hand. Unless I'm that six fingered man and you know. I did not kill anyone's father. That you know of. So I do not have to. One of the listeners Callie says it's because we are liked. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's I like absolutely liked. wonderful. Um okay, so I think we can try <clears throat> to condense that first section down sometimes. We can start trying to think of work on that. But well, it's there's just so much meat we get into with those. Well, it's the potpourri. Um, I mean, yeah. we can go to picks. I was just, I was just curious because I added a bunch of stuff. You but. did, thank you. And no, it's it's in the document, so it will stay. Don't worry. Um, for those of you that are listening live, uh, what we're talking about, just to you know, before we actually go to something that's going to get edited down, quick summary of all the things. Yeah. Uh, so we've got our science bitches segment. Um, there is unfortunate a super bug that is now realist, resistant to all available antibiotics, and it killed somebody in Nevada. Not good. Um, Just in time for us to lose the ACA. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's a uh, now. If you hate dentists and everything else, there's now yep. showing that teeth can be regrown using an Al- an Alzheimer's drug. I'm all for that because then I won't lose my memory and I get to keep my teeth. I'm all for that, too. That two birds, one stone. Fantastic. Uh, Tesla it has revealed that they will start charging for the charge, uh, which I pretty much was aware that they were going to start doing that. Um, $15 for a drive from Los Angeles <coughs> to San Francisco and 120 to go from L.A. to New York. Yeah, it's not that expensive given how much it would cost you to do gas for that. So. Well, you're paying by kilowatt, basically. Yeah. Incidentally, they yeah. will still give unlimited free charges to people who already own a Tesla or who order a high-priced Model S or Model X by Sunday. If I had the money, I would buy the $150,000 X right now. <laughs> but I don't. Yeah, no, can't do it. I want, want bioweapon defense mode, damn it. I do want the bioweapon defense <clears throat> mode. Um you can search for bioweapon defense mode on our on our website, and you'll get to the story, and and it's it's cool. Or just search uh, search out there, and they'll you'll find the story. Um, and the the new Nintendo console, the Nintendo Switch, is apparently going to cost uh, three hundred buckaroonies whenever it comes out, and it looks it looks really uh, really slick. I will say that um, it'll go on sale March third. Yep. And for Fred, I'd included a story about Europe calling for mandatory kill switches on robots. Ah, yes. Very happy. That's definitely good for Fred because he he doesn't trust those uh, those pesky robots and automata. The headline picture for that was my favorite part of that entire article. Oh, okay. Let me. uh... We're gonna pull it up now. Well, it's it's a video, I guess, but it's like the 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 pepper the robot first date. I'm on a first date. 
with a robot. Oh. Hey there, what's your name? You can call me Pepper. Nice to meet you, Pepper. Justice. Robot throwing shade. Great to meet you. So tell me a little bit about yourself. My name is Pepper. I'm a humanoid robot and I'm 1.20 meters tall. Are you a boy or a girl? Well, in the end, I'm just a robot. So what do you do, Pepper? I like to discuss things. Did you vote for Donald Trump or were you more of a Hillary Clinton supporter? See, it's always All Trump. All right. That wasn't a very straightforward answer. Okay, so you don't want to discuss politics. I don't like to talk about politics. It's a sensitive subject. Especially for a first date. What type of music do you like? Great. I love music, but don't be surprised if I dance on it. Is that okay with you? Oh, I love to dance. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's enough You're a good now. dancer. You okay. Dance, you will die. That's enough now um, of, that's... of that. Wow. So that was a thing. Um, yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Fred. You can, re- re- you can send your praise in next week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, then we have our Law and Order so, uh, blah, 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 segment. Yeah, I saw a bit about this, and it just made me just gag utterly. Uh, I'm assuming that you put this in there, Amber, and thank you for that. I didn't, uh, actually, but oh. I had seen it, and yeah. Yeah, uh, Russian Parliament passed a law which decriminalized domestic violence. It's only, though, for the first round of votes, it has to still go through a couple more, but still, the fact that it easily passed. Mm-hmm. Ugh. <sighs> Yeah, it it was a no-brainer for them. Um, and a national version of the heartbeat bill has been introduced. That's always uh, fun. Yeah, it's it's yet another anti-abortion bill. Um, yeah, as opposed to having brain activity, it's it's all about the heart. It's how you feel about it, right? It's all about the heart. Yeah, you know, that, you know that, heart. It, it it basically bans abortions after the sixth week of pregnancy, which is, you know, usually before a woman even knows she's pregnant. Yeah, it's right about then. Right about then when you even figure it out. Um, but I'm thinking, I, I think you actually hit a bit on the head there, Andy. It, it literally is a perfect mm-hmm. microcosm of the whole argument. Yeah. It, it's all about the feelings, not the thoughts. It doesn't matter if you have brain activity no. or functioning or viable or that. No, it's all about, oh, is this working? Okay, mm-hmm. that's all that matters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Senate holds a 1.30 a.m. vote to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Which it did it in a very interesting way. For very brief thing out there. What they did was they didn't just do a, hey, we're going to vote it to repeal it. No. They did what is called a votorama where they have a bunch of issues come up and they just essentially line item vote go. I'm sorry. Did you say votorama? Yes, that is the <laughs> actual term. That, that is that's the, the actual term. term. That is the actual term. And huh. what they did essentially <laughs> is they use, they use it typically for budget discussions, which this was technically a budget discussion. Yeah. So what they did was go through with their voting, and it wasn't a vote to de- to kill and repeal the ACA. It was more of a vote to we're just not going to fund certain things because it's part of the budget. Yeah. That was another uh, little pop quiz since I, I had mentioned that I had uh, spoken with my mother and she was all gushing about Rex Tillerson. And, um, you know, I, I obviously got into a political discussion um, of course. with my parents. And, um, you know, I gave them some pop quizzes on facts about things, you know, because I asked them, you know, um, about Planned Parenthood and whether or not they would, you know, what, what their opinions are of it. And they wanted to go away. Uh, completely. And I asked, okay, so I I just automatically figured, it's like, okay, what are the talking points that they've probably heard? Okay, uh, and what percentage do you think of their total business is abortive services? And they said about 10% or something like that. I said, no, it's 3%. And so I, have, I find that very difficult to believe. I said, you don't need to believe it because they publish it all. <laughs> and I said, but I don't think that no 
none of our tax money should ever go to go to abortion services. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't go there. By law, it doesn't go there. All of those services are funded by private donations. Yeah, the closest it gets to is an actual medically necessary situation mm-hmm. where it is an emergency room and the life of the mother is actually at risk. Yeah, but then you're in an emergency room. Yeah, and you're, a, n- and you're not in a planned parenthood. Procedure and someone's life is on the freaking line. Yeah. But I mean, most of the time they don't even want to have provisions for that. Nope. Yeah. It's just you both die. Yep. That's pretty like much it. Like you're going so. down with the ship. Yeah. And, and I said, well, you know, they do other things. They do like, I don't know, planning parenthood. You know, I was well, I was of, investigating of, getting a vasectomy through them. Yeah, there's that. There's you a lot know? of male service. It's not just a, yeah. as I've learned, it's not just a thing that women go to and get all their health benefits and everything else. There's a lot of male-centered like, mm-hmm. services out there that they mm-hmm. provide for people who don't have the money or who do but want better level of care. You know, yeah. Like you said, the second yeah. me, STD testing, my God, they do that all over the place. Yeah, that's, I think, one of their primary functions, actually. So all of those services, they would, oh, oh, lots of counseling, too. They do lots oh, yeah. of counseling. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah, good cancer boy, screening, yeah. counseling. Uh, you know, all of those services, they are willing to throw those out with just because a small amount goes to something they disagree with. The whole thing. So, yeah, that's always a fun conversation to get in with your parents, right? That's always a fun one. Um, I don't have that problem with my parents, <laughs> thankfully. Well, that's good. That's good. Uh, then we're down to good ideas. Um, going around the zeitgeist right now is something called angel shots. Apparently, if you if you order an angel shot, uh, there's uh, three different codes basically that uh, that these are. Not everybody's doing this yet. Uh, it's it's an interesting. Thing. Let's see. Okay, so um, you're on a date. It's not working. Something or other. If you go to the bar and ask for um, an angel shot, or also uh, depending on where you are, it could like in uh, Lincolnshire. <laughs> Apparently, it's called called an Angela. Uh, so if you the bar staff, if you go to the and order an Angela or an angel shot, bar staff will know that you need help. Um, and then there's a couple other codes, like if you're ordering it on the rocks, then police will be, no, uh, then someone will call you an Uber angel shot. Somebody will like get you out of there right now, I guess. And uh, someone will go, yeah, on the rocks, then they'll call you an Uber. And if it was with Lyme, then they'll call the police. Yeah. So there's. Oh, wow. There's several things that that are uh, there. It's interesting. I don't know if it's going to really show up in the United States. This is so far something that's very. Um, I think it's coming I up in Europe that, the, that like what they were doing uh, to make women aware of of their ability to do this was posting in the women's restroom, mm-hmm. like a like a little flyer that would let them know like what all the different the weird selection process we have. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's sad that we are in a society and world where this is a considered a necessity. However, anything that makes women safer, I'm all for. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yes, I'm 100% behind this idea. Yeah, so uh, keep an eye out for it. And, uh, you know, you can, you should also always just be able to go up and order a drink. And as they're taking your order, say, I also need help. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't need to necessarily use code. You could just say, help me. Well, sometimes, you know, if, you, if you've if you got the person who means to do you harm yeah. right there, you can't. It, it's why people yeah. sometimes will text or call, you know, Pizza Hut or Domino's yeah. and, you know, let them know that they need to call 911 because they can't. So in the case where you feel that you're unable to broadcast the fact that you need help directly, this is a good alternative so that you don't tip off the person who might get angry and then do you more harm. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Uh, order an angel shot neat. Bartender will escort you to your car. Ask for it on ice. Uh, and the bartender will call you a taxi or Uber and uh, order it with Lime and the restaurant staff will call the police. So I, I did. I did remember. So. Well done. <clears throat> so keep that keep that in mind. Should you uh, should you desperately need some help out there? Um, teen smacks gun away from McNugget thief. 
<laughs> yeah, this was this is a little girl who is hardcore into her freaking McNuggets. She what? was. So what the what? She's my hero. So on Wednesday, 12... a 12-year-old boy pulled a gun on a 13-year-old girl in Harlem and demanded she give him a McDonald's chicken nugget. Just one? Uh-huh. After denying him one, the boy followed her into the nearby six-train subway station and apparently threatened her with a gun, again demanding a chicken nugget. The 13-year-old not only denied the McNugget a second time, she smacked the gun from his hands and asked to be left alone, police said. I'm sorry, can, can, can I just be, like, impressed here on the fact of the absolute level of no fucks given by this that's, that's girl? That's serious, jeez. You get a gun pulled on you, just like, fuck you, no, walk away with your chicken nuggets, no. pulling you again, you're just like, Whoosh. no, my nuggets, like, whoa. <laughs> just that's... slapped it out of his hand. Man. 100%. What is in those nuggets? <laughs> what is in those nuggets? Oh my gosh. Okay, but, so Damn, she she's my twenty seventeen pick of the week, apparently. <laughs> Jesus. Damn. Oh, you remember that woman that lost her mind at the uh, drive thru at the McDonald's drive thru when she wanted nuggets and they were out? And she like yeah. climbed through the window and was like needing yeah. an exorcism. I mean she was absolutely insane. I think they might have something going on with the Nuggets. They're, well, I do occasionally order them, and sometimes they do taste better. Unreasonably good in some ways. <laughs> yeah. Um, Just better. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're some of them pretty good. Um, it's and, a delay uh, release toxin. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, and Amazon is apparently, they announced thursday that it plans to create more than 100,000 new full-time jobs full-time jobs Mm -hmm. in the u.s in the next 18 months bringing its total workforce in the country to 280,000 so wow that's increasing their workforce by more than a third don't expect amazon to hire 100,000 coders however much of its current and future workforce is made up of employees working warehouse jobs and answering phones oh yeah yeah it's it's definitely going to be They're opening uh, up warehouses all over the U.S., and they need people in centers. there. Yeah, because they want to do that that one-day delivery stuff. Which I've had happen, because I have Amazon Prime. There's yeah. a there's a place uh, not far from me, a few hours away. Yeah, fulfillment centers. And I've centers. had it delivered that bloody day, and I'm like, whoa, cool. <laughs> yeah, and they've also got some, some that are, like, not just same day, but, like, really, really short Two-hour, five-hour yeah. delivery. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're also they're also starting like grocery delivery services too. Yep. So this Amazon's gonna gonna really uh, start eating into like Walmart's business, like probably pretty seriously here coming soon. I think so. Mm. Yeah, but support your local bookstore. Seven. Yes. Support your local bookstore, otherwise they will go away. So if you like them, go 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 buy a book. Mm-hmm. Buy a book with cash. That way the government can't spy on you. From you know David O'Connor's uh, you know House of Tinfoil Hats. Find out your favorite author suddenly has her books on resale for a lot higher than she originally sold them for. Yeah, yeah that interesting what story there. Scented fuck was that? <laughs> Do you ever figure that out? No, I mean, I, I can't figure out the why. I know it's, you know, like third party sellers who are just jacking up the price on them. I, I just don't know why. Did you sign them or something? No. You should, con- you you should contact the seller. dead recently. <laughs> no, not recently. Not, re- not recently. <laughs> not recently. Good caveat. Good catch. All right. Then we got bad ideas. Um, this one was definitely, uh, I wanted to. I wanted Daniel on uh, tonight to talk about this one. But it's an opinion piece. Apparently they're thinking uh, Angela Merkel, the um, Prime Minister of Germany? Yeah, Mm -hmm. she's the PM. She's the Prime Minister of Germany. um, Might be Russia's next hacking target, or at least focus. So that could be interesting and, you know, possible. Who knows what they are? Germany is, again, look, going back to old Cold War strategy, the reason why we had so many bases in Germany, the reason why we had so many tank divisions and all, like an Air Force base in Germany is because it is the gateway to the rest of Europe. It's, from cen- Russia. it's Central Europe, yeah. 
Um, There's one particular pass that is the easiest thing to drive all the tanks and everything else through. And we had that thing targeted. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Because you know, if they're coming, that's where they're coming through. Yeah, because of the geography, you know, a lot of mountains otherwise. So that's just the way it is. Uh, and also, oh, Trump's inauguration will be headlining acts like Toby Keith and Three Doors Down and <laughs> Jennifer Holiday and a few other people that want to be relevant again. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be. Uh, I gave you like Toby Keith. DJ Rapid Drums, the piano guys. I like the piano guys. They're going to go. No. <laughs> Damn it. Lee How Greenwood. Much do they get paid? Hmm. Well, Lee Greenwood is, let's be honest, he, he sang the one song that everyone knows. Mm-hmm. He, he needs a paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will not fault him. That man needs a paycheck. Yeah. He's, got the one, he's got the one trick. That's really it. Like yeah. I wrote in the notes, the only thing worse than Trump's inauguration is who's headlining it. Yeah. And then Rudy Giuliani also wanting to, uh, you know, remain relevant. Saying Trump will fight hacking with a cybersecurity council. Like we don't already have it in every single group of defense intelligence agency. And All of them have CIA one. And yeah. FBI and, oh, I don't know, the Joint Terrorism Task Force. All of them Literally have one. Has yeah. one of these. Yeah. The council is going to be CEOs, apparently. That. Wow. Unless those CEOs happen to be people like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk. Yeah. Uh, Zuckerberg. You know, I'm sorry. No. We're going to provide unfiltered information without a report. Here are the problems. Here is how they're dealing with it. Giuliani said it starts with CEOs talking about what they're seeing firsthand. The CEOs don't know anything about what's going on firsthand in their IT. It will apparently be a rotating council that will occasionally How feature fast? different... How fast? Are we talking 3Gs, 4Gs here? Because I want to live stream that and watch it. No, the, ca- the, council, the, the council will meet, you know, in, in the, uh, the restaurant on the top of the uh, Space Needle. <laughs> Slowly <laughs> rotating <laughs> around. One yep. rotation. Get one rotation to discuss an issue. <laughs> yeah. By the time we make it back, everybody's out. <laughs> no, I just want them on like a literal carousel, like on horses and unicorns, like going around trying to talk to each With other. With a calliope in the background. <laughs> uh, the giant chicken. <laughs> They're apparently going to include cybersecurity firms, but they will feature different industries as well. <sighs> this doesn't. This doesn't make and any the, sense. The bigger issue for me, why I put it in bad ideas, is because you have a council who has been ordered by someone who knows nothing about cybersecurity, whose response to those issues is, let's shut the internet down. Like, that for me is the bigger picture problem. The frightening thing is we can do it, however, don't do it. (laughs) Do do you one of you have a fan blowing near you? It's me. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm I'm picking it up, so everybody gets yeah. to hear it. Um, I haven't it. moved or anything. It just it's louder sometimes, randomly. I don't know. It, it's it's wind noise picking up on your mic. So yeah, it's blowing past your head or something. Um, it's just okay. I mean, I could be running. Are you running? You might. No. I, I suppose you could be running. Uh, yeah, I just could be. You could be. Doubt yeah. you are. Yeah. Okay. And I'm then running away from this. <laughs> I ran, I ran so far away. Um, need a flock of seagulls. That's what we need. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. We really don't need a little a, atta- a little flock of attacked seagulls. <laughs> caca, caca. No, wait, that's wrong. Trained aerial pooping seagulls. <laughs> there we go. Just seemed to make sense. You know, trained aerial Excellent. pooping seagulls. Okay, so um, you know, I still need a an intro drop to picks. Um. If we we're going to do things like that, but uh, um, you should do like the Pokemon I choose you. Ooh, that's an idea. Hmm, I have them that. sometimes. Ideas or Pokemon? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, mostly ideas. Ideas about Pokemon? Sometimes uh, those do, um, yeah, yeah, that too. Okay, <laughs> as um, is illustrated in this case. Indeed, um, I have uh, yes, my pick, which I have not written down yet, is uh, the Silicon Dust. Uh, did I already throw the box away? I probably already threw the box away. Uh, I did. Okay. 
uh, the Silicon Dust Home Run Connect. It connects up to your TV antenna, and it then pipes directly into your Ethernet port, and you can pull up on your phone in your house uh, broadcast television. Or you could also hook it up to a DVR and actually record local television. Nice. It works just out of the box with very little setup on a ridiculous number of things, like including PlayStation, Xbox, uh, my Synology NAS box has a video recorder, and it just, it says, oh, would you like to configure this thing that's already on your network? Okay, sure, yeah, please. So it's um, it's really it's really pretty darn cool, and it, I invested in a uh, a big old TV aerial and put it up on a big pole outside my house, and I went from having 18 spotty channels to over 64. All in, you know, brilliant HD, you know, full digital, oh, wow. digital everything. Um, though I'm, I'm still not even sure what I'm getting. I'm getting a lot of religious stations and a lot of home shopping and several, um, I believe, uh, broadcast in Espanol, um, <laughs> which I do not speak. So that's not going to work for me. But uh, there are, Just had there's, there's plenty of stuff out there. Lots of uh, uh, public broadcasting and, of course, the, the major networks. So, um People forget that, you know, you can do, you can cut the cable, pay what it would cost you, you know, for maybe two months of your, uh, of your cable subscription, and you can do over the air stuff for the rest of time. You can do it. Mm -hmm. So cut mm -hmm. the, cut those cords, save yourself some money over the long term, uh, and you'll, uh, you'll still have some entertainment. It won't be, you know, you're not going to get the Disney Channel and you're certainly not going to get HBO, but that's what the internet's for. You'll find, it. you'll find it. Set your girls down in front of the telenovelas and, you know, leave them there for about a week. <laughs> Telemundo. How you learn, yeah. <laughs> how you learn Spanish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, actually, my girlfriend learned uh, learned German by watching some German uh, uh, soap operas. Oh, I'm so glad you filled that space because I was about to. And you no, like no, <laughs> no. Soap operas. Soap opera. <laughs> Dirty, dirty mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Stephen. I really love you. I have. I came across this book and this man. His name is a uh, Chade Meng Tan. He's a one of the first. His actual ID number is one hundred seven. He's one of the first Google engineers. And Google is a very interesting place. Very great company that also goes. Hey, we have these other things we want you to work on or. You have free time to work on other crap. And one of the things they do is like emotional intelligence and how to connect with people and everything else. And he decided, okay, well, he's practiced like actual what's called mindfulness meditation for a while. But see, okay, he wanted to look more and deep into this and actually look at, okay, let's look at it from an actual scientific perspective. So nothing in the book even says there, nothing in the book is not backed up by science. Everything goes, you know, looking at this study, looking at this study, you know, here are these things. And he created this program, which the actual Google course is called Search Inside Yourself. Of course, very Google. Mm -hmm. um, it is a beautifully written, wonderful explanation of how to get into meditation and do mindfulness meditation from an engineering perspective. So oh. forget the, the Far Eastern, the okay, now we're going to settle back and realign your chakras and do this kind of stuff. It's more like, no, here's what you do. And for a very, you know, like, you know, instead of, you know, deepening your emotional connection and do all this, the, no, we're just going to increase your emotional resolution. <laughs> now, anybody who is, deals with tech knows can immediately visualize what that means. Oh, everything's clearer now. Cool. You know, and that's the way the entire book is written. And within, I've been now... I've had it, been reading it for a couple of days now, and within the first 30 pages, I immediately was practicing some of the meditation techniques and already had like a like an epiphany moment. So, I'm not saying everybody's going to have that, but far from it. Hmm. Right book, right time for me. Um, even he says, "Hey, this might not work for everybody, but you know, give it a shot." Um, I highly recommend it. His idea, uh, as a man, is he wanted to create the potential for world peace. That is the whole reason he built the course 
the whole reason he did all this stuff is the idea he wants to create that atmosphere that there's a potential for it to occur. So as, he, as it says, you know, search inside yourself the unexpected path to achieving success, happiness, and world peace. It's an amazing book. It's like 12 or 13 bucks on Amazon. It's, it's worth it, in my opinion. It's very much, you know, if you want to figure it out from a business perspective, okay, well, here's, you know, how it can apply to you in business. Um, <laughs> All natural, organic self-confidence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> breathing <laughs> as if your life depends on it. It yeah. does. It does, by the way. It, it, it. <laughs> but it's all amazing. And the nice thing is, it does. it's not like a whole thing like, okay, you need to spend like 10,000 hours doing meditation to learn these things, to figure these things out. He's like, no, here. Here's two minutes. That's all you really need. Go. You do more um, than that, definitely. The more equals better. Oh, I'm getting feels what? being effective and loved at the same time. It's like, mm. just been like, just two minutes doing this meditation exercise. Cool. Go. It's all about starting and then just continuing. But it, I, I've used it. I mean, I've my work is not the uh, least stressful thing in the world, given what I have to listen to and talk about. Yeah. So I use this between my phone calls, and it, it has helped immensely. Hmm. I'm still get out of the job. But are, are you riding your emotions like a horse? I haven't done <laughs> that chapter yet. <laughs> but if you wish to save the world in your free time <laughs> that's the epilogue yeah, search inside yourself by Chad and Meng Tan I highly recommend it, go out there read it it's, it's an amazing book and I think it will help a lot of people okay, it is currently available for paperback on Amazon, which we just spoke of at uh, $12.11 search inside yourself Pretty slick. Pretty slick there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Amber, what was yours? Mine is also a book. Ooh, okay. Through fiction. Yep. It is called Strangeness in the Proportion, and it was written by Joshua Allen Deach, um, who has written for White Wolf, for Funcom, um, uh, it was uh, it's set in the world of darkness universe previously serialized on the White Wolf website. Oh, okay. Um, and the description is: from the moment a quirky medical examiner falls in love with Jane Doe, he is drawn into the hidden supernatural world behind her murder, a world of darkness. Uh huh. Yep. And it's it's beautifully written. Um, that was one of the most compelling elements of it for me, besides the story being fantastic in its own right. But, um, I've had kind of, I, I've taken issue a bit with some of the newer horror novels recently, uh, because there seems to be a move toward like just gore as the, as the scare tactic. And there's not a whole lot of, you know, um, psychological horror psychological horror and one one of the things that i've always enjoyed about gothic horror in particular is that it's beautiful it is hideously beautiful and that's what this is i mean the title even comes from an edgar Allan poe quote which he took from francis bacon which is there is no exquisite beauty without some strangeness in the proportion hmm. and um it's it's just it's, it's a really incredible novel. Um, everything this guy writes is is fantastic, to be honest with you. Um, but the fact that it is set in the world of Darkness Universe let him play with some of the elements from that game, um, which I found very interesting as well, being somebody who has played World of Darkness. So it's available in PDF format from Drive Through Fiction uh, for a dollar. A whole dollar. Yeah, or you can get the soft cover book for seven dollars, or you can get both the PDF and the the paperback for eight dollars. And reading reading the description here, it's like, so, is it a uh, essentially dealing with a with a gold, with a uh, Promethean? He, yeah, uh, the, flesh you know, Incidentally, there are Prometheans in the story. She's not one of them. Um, hmm. but he uh, Simon works for the medical examiner's. Uh, office and um he's just weird he's got this this aura about him that repels the living but he's kind of a haru specs like he can he can read entrails which makes him very good at his job um as you might imagine 
And when connecting with this one corpse, this Jane Doe, he falls in love with her. And he immediately feels the need to protect the memory of her. And so he gets involved in this murder investigation um, that really takes him into, um, like it forces him to deal with the fact that he is preternatural and that there are other beings that in Chicago that are of the supernatural variety. And it allows him to immerse himself in that world and become part of the mythos. Hmm. So go, going, to, going to breaking out here and, and geeking out a little bit. So essentially he's becoming a hunter. Kind of. Yeah. And there, there's vampires in the mix. There's, um, there's uh, a bunch of interludes like in between uh, every so often uh, it'll take away from the, um, the chapters that have to do with the main story and they'll do an interlude um, that deals with other creatures, like a, like a one shot chapter of, of just something else that's going on in the world of darkness. And those are really compelling too. That's cool. The, uh, the reviews are quite uh, stunning. Yeah, the, it's, it's fantastic. I reviewed it myself on good, on Goodreads. Hmm. Um, I mean, and, and one of the things that I keep seeing people repeat um, now that I'm looking at them, too, is they're on their third read through. They've read through it several times. I am somebody who does not read through the same thing twice. I don't. I have a very good memory. It's something that I pride myself on. And I also have ADHD, so I don't like information repeated to me. I've read this three times. Mm. Like wow. just to almost just for like the cadence and the flow of the thing. Um it's hmm. it's got this this way of like as you're reading, it's pulling you along into reading more. Um, like a Pied Piper type of effect. Like in the same way that House of Leaves doesn't want you to read it, like it's actively, you know, pushing the reader away. This just draws and um hmm. So I, I'm, I've read it three times. Um, I've read it out loud to people um, um, because I, I just think it needs to be shared. And it's, it's not a very well-known work, um, but it's fantastic. I think it's probably one of the best, especially recent horror novels that I've read. Hmm. And he was the, the lead writer up until recently for Funcom's The Secret World, um, which is a very, like, World of Darkness-esque MMO. Really? Yes, sir. Is that how you found him? Yeah, um, that's actually one of my favorite games ever. I, I play oh, it. Oh, Secret World? The Secret World, Secret yeah. World? Yeah, I play it fairly religiously. And um, hmm. so that's that's how I, I kind of came into contact with him. And, and then I found out that this was a book of his, and I was interested because I do engage in world of darkness not as much as i would like to um and um yeah it's it's just great it's he's got a lot of clout with with horror and and science fiction and things like that um but that to me is like one of his best works and it it does a it does a funny thing that i like as well which is that it combines a certain element of romance into the horror Mm mm-hmm and I always find that very compelling, not even in a like, oh, they're going to get together way of just this, you know, tri- like a um, like Victorian type of yeah. gothic, dark, mm. romantic element. It's doomed from the start, but you can't help but root for Yeah. Them. Oh, yeah. It's like a Crimson Peak, like, you know, like this is not going to end well type thing. And um, I always find that mm. very compelling. Interesting. So and for a dollar, I mean, come on. It's got to be, got to be a, dollar. a easy yeah. no brainer. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy that right after the show. Excellent. Uh, you, I think you will enjoy it. I may, I may indeed, because I definitely like, uh, I like White Wolf stuff. Um, they're, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I hate their game systems themselves, but the stories are, are yeah, the lore, at. like the. Yeah. Yeah, that I've, yeah, I've uh, thrown out uh, the rules many times and just said, okay, so here's what I want to do. What happens? You know, it's like, just don't bother rolling. Just, you know, here's what I can usually do. And as long as you can convince the storyteller that that's, that's possible, it yeah. happens, you know. So and one of our listeners just said it's like Crimson Peak, but with less sister fucking. So that's fair. Less sister fucking. So you're saying that's still there. You're saying there's a there's chance. Any. So you're saying there's I'm, a chance. I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure there's none. <laughs> no, no, it's entirely background sister fucking. Mm, mm. Yeah, it's just going on, you know. 
Okay, so not Game of Thrones kind of stuff, but you know. No, no, it's okay, like over okay. somebody's shoulder, you know. Oh, it's like just over there. in a window, you yeah. notice down the building. Ah, yeah. okay. across the street. In the street. You know how it's usually carried out. Oh, uh, the usual. <laughs> right, yeah, right. The, the usual. usual. Okay, and uh, Fred had one. <clears throat> um, it is out on the ScienceChannel.com. Oh, hello. Um, let me uh, mute that tab. There we go. Okay. Um, let me uh, pull up that. There we go. Okay. So, <clears throat> out of the Science Channel, uh, it's called The Moaning of Life. Um, I'm not sure about this, so we'll, we'll get to... Uh, Next time he's on, we'll have him uh, have him go through and and say why this is cool. But uh, so far, it's uh, hey, if you're looking for some entertainment, apparently you can get full episodes, uh, maybe on full episodes on Science Go. So if you actually wanted to continue your cord cutting lifestyle, because who doesn't? Um, it, you probably have to pay something though. Not sure though. Uh, Okay, we'll let him talk about that next time. So forget I said it. Yep. <laughs> Just forget right, I forget I mentioned anything about it whatsoever. About what? Why are you still talking? I'm not. I'm done. Exactly. I'm done, and you know what? So are we. It's the end. So <clears throat> that's it for tonight. We'll be back live next Friday sometime. You know that whole inauguration thing. I think we need to cover it. Uh, so. We're going to plan for that. But otherwise, uh, we're going to go to a bi-weekly schedule uh, so that we can fit some more broadcasts into your life from the Random Acts Company. Um, in the meantime, go out to our webpage. You can uh, check out all the show notes. You can find past episodes, and you can play uh, the audio, download the audio, and also, of course, subscribe to the RSS feed so you can get it all the time. Um but keep that conversation going. So go over to O'ReillyRadio.com. That's O-R-L-Y-R-A-D-I-O. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter, Tumblr, Google+. Subscribe to the podcast uh, for the audio version. The YouTube channel for the video after the fact. The Twitch channel if you want to stream us live. And, of course, uh, we also have a chat. But nobody was in that tonight. But that's okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. If you've enjoyed what, you've, what we've done here today and you'd like to help us out, there's a few ways. You can donate to the show through patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash O-R-E-L-L-Y-R-A-D-I-O o -R -L -Y -R -A -D -I -O, and get early access to show content and other, uh, other tips and tricks and reviews and all sorts of good stuff. At least I hope it's good stuff, right? And also, <clears throat> while you're out there on the web, go over to iTunes.com and uh, you know leave us a review. Find us there, leave us a review. That will help put us in front of new people. It'll raise the suggestion rankings and all that for new content and uh tell somebody about us you know the the folks that are out there watching right now and watching me stumble through this you know you you out there heard about us somehow tell somebody else and bring them into the fold of a really radio uh and of course you know we've got the social media so how about you contact us directly interact with us uh email address oh really radio podcast at gmail.com and of course we've got a voice line number at 470-222-6759 always ready to take your call or your text thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time with us this has been O'Reilly Radio part of the Random Acts Company this work licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license including the music Rocket and Pemgea created by Kevin McLeod of Incomptech.com thanks everyone and we'll see you next time <laughs> <laughs>